Hey everyone, welcome back. This is Dan from DHTV and today is the beginner's guide to the iPhone 14, 14 Pro and 14 Pro Max. Let's get started. All right, so what we're looking at right here is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, but like I said, this will work for any iPhone 14 model and even older models for that matter, minus a few things here and there. Now what you're looking at on my screen is my home screen. So if you haven't set up your iPhone yet, you're gonna wanna do that. There's a link in the description to a setup tutorial or you can click the card right there. This way you can set up your iPhone first and then you can log in. Now once you've set up your phone, you'll be taken to this page here. This is your lock screen and you swipe up to unlock it. You'll either unlock it with your facial recognition, which is face ID if you set that up or you'll enter in a passcode. But once you've unlocked it, you should be taken to this home screen and that's where we're gonna begin. Now, as always, before we move forward, there's a link in the description to the full playlist of iPhone 14 tips, tricks, and tutorials. So after this video, if you're looking to learn more, check that out and get the most out of your iPhone. So this is our home screen. And basically this is where all of our applications are going to be housed. You'll also see some widgets at the top. It all depends on how your iPhone was set up and what you've done to it. But we're gonna start by looking at these applications and the way we navigate through our home screen. So the first thing, navigations are done by swipes. You can see I swiped left and it took me to my second page of applications. If I swipe left one more time, I'm taking to my app library, which is a library of all the applications on your iPhone. You can use the search bar at the top to search for applications. For example, if we wanted the clock app, we just type clock and it'll bring up our clock app. We can open that application. We can tap on the different options. We can scroll just by tapping and then swiping up and down. And to exit any application and return to your home screen, you just swipe up from the bottom like so. If you're on your app library or on your second page of your home screen, you can always swipe up. It'll always take you to the front page. Now opening applications is as simple as just tapping on them. The app opens, closing is swiping as I just showed you, but you can actually move these applications around just by tapping on a blank area of the screen. All the applications will start shaking and then you can just tap and hold on that application and drag it wherever you want on the screen. You'll see the other apps will move and adjust based on where you placed your app. Now, while these apps are shaking, that brings us to the next step here, which is actually deleting applications. As you download more and more apps, or you notice that you're not using applications as much, you may wanna delete them. For example, if you don't use your podcast app, what you would do is tap on the screen anywhere in a blank area. When they start shaking, you can tap on that minus icon and then tap delete app. It'll prompt you, letting you know that you're going to delete this app, tap delete to continue, and you've deleted that app from your iPhone. Now keep in mind, you can always go back in the app store and install that app once again, and we'll go over installing apps a little bit later in this video. Now in the cases where you don't wanna delete an app, but you don't want it on your home screen taking up space, you can actually remove the app from the home screen. So for example, if you don't use the health app, you can tap and hold, some extra options will appear and you can just tap remove application. You'll still be prompted to delete the app, but if you look underneath, there's one called remove from home screen. If we tap on that, it removes it from our home screen, but we can always access it from our app library whenever we want. So that way it clears some of the clutter on our home screen, but at the same time, isn't removed from our iPhone. Now organizing apps is pretty simple. And if you ever wondered how do I put applications in folders, it's pretty easy. You're just going to tap and hold on the application. When they start shaking, you can then drag each application on top of each other to create a folder. So let's say we wanted the clock and reminders app in one folder, we just drag it over on top of that and it'll create this folder for us. It'll name it, you don't have to use that name, we can name it whatever we want and then tap done. We can tap outside, and then we can just tap done up top, and now we've created our folder. Now you can continue adding applications to that folder as you go. You can even drag that same folder just by holding completely like this, even drag it over to another page and start adding apps from that page into that folder. So there's a lot of customization that you have with your folders and applications on your iPhone. It's just a matter of setting it up the way you like it. 
Now on your home screen, you can actually add widgets. So we're gonna tap in a blank area and hold. We're gonna tap plus at the top left and it's gonna open up our widgets that we can add to our home screen. So for example, if we wanted to add the weather, we could tap on that and you can see how the icon will look when you add it to your home screen. This one here takes up the most real estate where this one takes up the smallest. So let's add this one here, we'll tap add. It'll add it to our home screen here. And this is actually a stacked widget, which I'll talk about in a second, but there it is. And we can move it around just by tapping and holding and dragging it around our screen like so. When we're ready or happy with where it is, we tap done and now it's there. Now this particular app was called a stack, like I said, and that means I can swipe to all the different stacks or all the different widgets that were within that stack when I added it. So if I tap once again in the empty space, tap the plus, you can scroll down and see all the widgets that you have. And as you add more and more applications to your iPhone, you'll notice that you'll have more and more widgets that you can choose from. So you'll wanna go through this from time to time and see if there's anything interesting that you'd wanna add. For example, batteries is always a good one so you can see the battery percentage of all your Apple devices that are connected with your Apple ID. So once it's there, I can tap done. And now my home screen is set up. If you ever need to remove a widget, you can tap and hold. You can tap remove stack or remove whatever the widget is called. And it'll prompt you to confirm, tap remove, and it's gone. But like the apps, you can always go back in the widget library and add them back again. Now let's go over how to download applications to the iPhone. And it's pretty simple. We'll tap on the App Store application here. If you can't find it, just go to your app library and type in app and it'll pop up and you wanna open the App Store application. So when it comes to downloading apps, it's pretty simple. You're just going to navigate by tapping along any of these edges here and you can then search for different applications you'd wanna download. Now, if you've used an iPhone in the past or you've had applications downloaded in the past, you may notice some cloud icons on certain applications. That means you've downloaded them once and they're still associated with your Apple ID. So if you wanna download those again, it's as simple as just tapping on that cloud icon and it'll begin downloading. While apps are downloading, you can still use your iPhone and do whatever you'd like with it. You'll notice that the app will be on your home screen downloading like so, and when it's done, it'll look like any normal app. But if you wanted to download something here, for example, this game right here, Sudoku, we just tap get, and because it says get, that means we've never installed it before, it's going to prompt you to install the application. So all we have to do is tap install, it's going to prompt us to enter in our passcode. And once you've entered it, just tap enter or tap sign in. It'll give you a little ding. And now you're taken back to the app store and your app is going to begin downloading. Now, as you start using the app store, the system is gonna actually prompt you and ask you if you wanna allow free apps to download on their own without having to put a passcode or if you wanna use face ID, you'll be able to follow those steps and set up the app store the way you want. So that's how you download applications from the app store to your iPhone. Now let's talk about the buttons on your iPhone. And there are a few. So on the left side of the iPhone, you can see we have two buttons and then a little switch. These two buttons are your volume rockers. So as you're listening to media or you have a phone call, you can raise and lower the volume with those two buttons. Above it is the silent switch. Anytime you turn that on, you'll see it turns orange that means that your phone is now in silent mode. If you wanna turn silent mode off, just click the switch once again. On the right side, there's also a button, and this button is your side button. Basically what this one does by default is activate Siri, if you press and hold. But it also is associated with powering off the device as well. So in order to turn off the iPhone, if you've ever wondered how, it's pretty simple, but it is a little bit annoying because it's not just pressing one button. You're actually going to have to press and hold this side button and one of the volume rockers at the same time. So we'll give both of those a press and hold. When you see this icon appear, slide to power off, simply slide to power it off. You will get a prompt that's gonna say that your phone is still findable after it's powered off by the Apple Find My app. So just say okay, and the iPhone will turn off. 
After a few seconds, the phone will be powered down. To power on your iPhone once again, or turn it on, it's pretty simple. It's just going to be a press or a press and hold, depending. We'll just press and hold on that side button until you see the Apple logo. And depending on how filled up your phone is with media, photos, videos, it might take a little bit longer to power on, but it shouldn't take too long, just takes about 30 seconds depending, and then you just swipe up to unlock your phone. Anytime you shut down your iPhone and turn it back on, Face ID is disabled. You'll have to enter in the passcode, so we'll just enter that in, and we're back on our iPhone. Now let's talk about some of these features that are a little bit more hidden on the iPhone. First is our notification center. When we pull down from the top, it'll bring up this page. It looks very similar to the lock screen, but it's gonna house all of our notifications and they'll appear at the bottom here. Now I don't have any on the phone at the moment, but this is where you can access them, tap on them, clear them, and it's pretty simple. You would just swipe left to delete or tap on them to open the notification. To the right side, we can pull down from our iPhone and that brings up our control center. And the control center houses all of the quick application settings that we can use. So the top left, it is going to be all about the networking. So we have our airplane mode, so we can turn off all cellular data networks, or if you're on an airplane. You have your Wi-Fi, so you can connect to your Wi-Fi you have Bluetooth to connect Bluetooth devices to. And if you tap and hold on these blocks, it'll bring up some additional options. AirDrop to transfer files, personal hotspot. These are more advanced, so we're not gonna really talk about them in this video, but that's how you would access those features. To the right of our networks, we have our media. So anytime you have media playing, you'll see it here. You can tap and hold once again, it'll bring it up. And this is where you'll see the album art or the YouTube video, the Netflix show. And you can control the audio right here. You can play, pause. You can even tap right here, which will bring up any other options you have to connect your audio to. So if you had headphones that were connected via Bluetooth, you could actually tap on them and now the sound would come through those Bluetooth headphones rather than the iPhone. The next one is the orientation. Now, if you've ever used an application or even the internet here, let's just go to Apple's website. You traditionally look at it using the phone like this. However, if you turn the phone, it's actually going to flip it into this horizontal landscape mode. If this happens to you and you don't like it, or it just seems to happen a little bit too often for you for what you're doing at the moment, you can lock the orientation in the control center. Just simply tap on it, and now anytime you are on a website, no matter what, it will not flip when you flip to landscape. So keep that in mind, but also remember you have that on. It's a big question I get a lot. A lot of people turn it on and forget that it's on and then think the iPhone is broken. The next one is a mirroring option, a little bit more advanced and focus a little bit more advanced as well. If you do wanna learn about focus, there is a link in the description and the card up top. So you can click on that to learn how focus works. And then we have our brightness and volume. Now brightness and volume is pretty self-explanatory. You can control the dial just like that. You can control the volume just like that, or you can tap and hold and bring up some additional options here. Now the way my phone is set up, it has dark mode off right now, which means it's on light mode. So the best way to show you this example is if I open the settings application, you can see it's nice and bright. And if I tap and hold on the brightness and tap dark mode, and tap on settings, now you see it's nice and dark. So it's all about personal preference. You can also tap and hold and change the night shift, which is going to take away the blue from your screen and then make it more of a warm feeling look. And that's supposed to be better for your eyes. And then you have true tone, which is on and off. You can tap on that and see which one you like better as well. For me, I'm just gonna leave it on light mode for now. Now we have some quick applications and these were pre-installed by Apple here. You have your flashlight which basically when you tap on it, turns on the flashlight on your phone. Pretty self-explanatory there. You have the clock, which will open the clock app, the calculator, we all need a calculator. And then you have your camera and the remote. So if you have an Apple TV, you can configure this remote with your Apple TV. Now with that being said, you can actually open the settings application here and scroll down to where it says control center and add even more quick applications 
to those features. So at the top, you can see what are the included controls. You can tap on any of them that you don't want. So if you didn't want the remote and then tap remove, you can remove them. They'll go down to this page here where you can add more controls. And you just basically select the one you want. So if you wanted a dedicated dark mode toggle, you can tap to turn that on. You also have a low power mode toggle. So if you wanna be able to control that, and now we've added those too. If we pull our control center, you can see we have those there as well. Anytime we wanna go into dark mode, we just flip that on rather than having to tap and hold. So that's how you add applications to your control center. Now let's go over some of the basic settings within the iPhone 14. And we've already gone through the quick settings up top, but these settings are more advanced and will have more features that you can use throughout your phone. So first is your networking settings. So you have your airplane mode, Wi-Fi, all the same stuff you had in your control center. If you ever need to add something to Bluetooth, you would just open your Bluetooth settings and go through the pairing process of the instructions of the actual device. You have your notifications here, which you can configure how the notifications are going to look for each app you have installed. And you can play around with them, but the display as it stands right now is in a stack. You can have each notification listed or a count. You can have the preview being showed on the lock screen. So that means that when you get, say, a message, it'll give you a quick preview of the message when it's unlocked only, or you can say always, which will be locked and unlocked or never. You can have notifications announced. This is great if you have headphones in. This way, when you get a message, it'll just notify you and Siri will read the message in your ear. And like I said, you can configure how the notifications will work within each specific app. So just go through them and configure them as you'd like. Now, sounds and haptics is good as well. It's a very custom thing for people. You can set ringtones and text tones specifically for different notifications that you would get. So first up the top here, we can see the volume, we can raise it. And you can see the dynamic island at the top activates based on what you're doing. That's what this little pill icon is called. You can also change the volume with the button. So if you tap on that, now you can actually use your volume rockers to raise and lower the volume. like so. Below that, we have all of the different sections. So ringtones, text tones, and so on that you can set specific tones for. So if we open this up, you can see we have a whole list here of different ringtones, alert tones, and stuff that we can use. So let's say we wanted our ringtone to be this. We can select that, and that's now our ringtone. Same thing for text tones. You can go through all the text tones that there are and even add ringtones for your text if you'd like. And you're gonna do that for all of these so that it's custom the way you'd like. Now, if you wanna add your own ringtones like music or cool sounds from the internet, I have a video that'll show you how to create and customize these and it's free that you can use instead of these pre-programmed. So the video is here in the card or you can click the link in the description. Next is the keyboard feedback. As you type on the iPhone here, you're gonna hear a tone or a sound. If you don't mind that tone, the clicking sound when you're typing, you can keep that on. But if you also turn this on, you'll have the haptic feedback. And haptics are just like a vibration on the phone. Whenever you're typing, it's gonna vibrate. I keep that off just because it's going to burn the battery out a little more. The vibration's a big battery burner. So that's how I have it set up. The lock sound, basically it's on when you turn your phone or lock your phone. You hear that little click? That's all that is. If you don't want the lock sound, you can turn it off. And then same here, ring and silent mode switch. So when your phone is not on silent, when it just rings, you're going to have the haptics also playing, so it's gonna vibrate and ring at the same time. If you turn that off, you won't have the haptics. You'll only hear the ringtone. And then the second option is when you're in silent mode, meaning you've clicked this switch here and put it on silent, what's gonna happen? So basically it means that it's going to still vibrate in your pocket or wherever you have your phone while it's in silent mode. So I like to keep them both on, totally up to you what you choose. Next is the system haptics and that's just vibrations throughout the system while you're doing different things. Uh, the different controls, it's just going to turn those off or on. That's all you have to choose from here. See how you like it on. If things are bothering you, just turn it off.
Moving back to our main settings page here, we're gonna take a look at wallpaper because this has changed with iOS 16. It's more like the Apple Watch now. So for example, this is the wallpaper we have set up. You can see that we can add new wallpapers or customize our existing wallpaper. First, let's tap customize on our lock screen. What that does is bring us to what our lock screen looks like right now, and we can tap in these little boxes and change up these sort of widgets. Now these widgets look different than our home screen widgets. They're in little blocks, very similar, as I said, to the Apple Watch. So this one here has the date. It has something with location, but I don't have my location services on. We can choose anything we want here. So for example, let's say we wanted the stocks. Now we'll have a little stock ticker up there as well. The second one is our clock. And we can change the font and color of our clock as well. So let's say we wanted that, and we wanted the font to be different as well. Let's say we want it clear instead of that sort of green color. The next one is two blocks where we can add whatever widgets we want. We can remove them just by tapping on the minus, and I'll remove those two. And we'll choose what I want here. So I want my battery indicator here. I have two options. I'm gonna choose the small one. And then I'm going to go back and choose, let's say we wanted our fitness there as well. So now we've added those in, and this is now our custom lock screen section at the top. We'll tap done when we're done, and it's going to load those in. And we can also customize our home screen, so where our applications are. And we can change the color, we can set it to a gradient, and if we tap it again, it'll let you choose all of these different options that we can customize it. So if you choose color and tap it a second time, you can choose all those different colors. I'm gonna go back to the original. You can even add photos from your photo library and even set blur if you'd like. When you're done, tap done, and now you've customized your wallpaper. Additionally, you can add multiple wallpapers, which is really cool, and that opens up a whole list here of wallpapers that you can choose from and set up with your iPhone 14. Now you can choose photos, shuffles, emojis if you want, and it'll create a wallpaper of emojis. Now you can turn and switch to the different grids as well of how it's going to look. That actually looks really crazy, but you can't really see anything up top. I'm just gonna cancel that one out. Or you can choose from some of these pre-created ones like this one of fish. And you can choose the grid, smaller fish or large fish. We'll go with small and we'll add that in. We can set the wallpaper for both. And now we have a new wallpaper. And now that we've created a second wallpaper, if we lock our screen on our iPhone and we have Face ID set up, as long as we look at our phone with Face ID, you'll see it unlocked right at the top here. We can tap now and hold on the lock screen right from there and we can scroll between our wallpapers and choose whichever one we want or even create another one. So if we wanna go back to our original wallpaper, we just tap on it. So you can set wallpapers for different days of the week or different settings that you might be in, and that gives you a lot more customization with your iPhone 14. Now let's go over some more swipes with the iPhone, some of the more advanced swipes. So first off, we looked at the basic swipe, left, right, up, down, things like that, and exiting apps, but there actually is an app switcher built into this iPhone, and it's gonna let you multitask. So for example, we lift up our finger and hold in the middle, all the open apps are going to appear. So now we can just quickly tap on it and switch between apps super quick, like this. We can also close our applications this way by swiping up, and you can close multiple at the same time by using multiple fingers, two or even three fingers, and close out all the apps. Now in the past it was always good to close out apps, but these phones have become optimized so well that you don't really need to close them at all. It's actually better to leave them open. So just keep that in mind. Now additionally, if you're on the internet and you're looking at websites, scrolling is easy. You're just swiping up and down. You can tap and hold on any links to peek behind those and see what's going on. So we can see what's actually behind that link before we go to it. We can choose to open it, all of that. If we don't want to, we can just swipe away. It'll keep us on the screen that we were already on. You can then zoom by pinching. So if you've used the camera before, you can pinch to zoom and zoom right in on photos if you need to zoom in because you can't see something. And that'll work very similar in the camera app as I just mentioned, we'll just set that up later. So if you have the camera app open, you can pinch to zoom 
like this as well. Now the camera app is a very big feature with the iPhone. I actually just put together a full tutorial on the iPhone 14 camera app as well as the 14 Pro and Pro Max, but it's pretty simple. You've got your photo, your shutter, you just tap to take photos. You can swipe between all of these different options. And there's so much to this camera app. There really is a full tutorial that you'd wanna watch rather than me just kinda of go over it here. But you can play around with it still. It's there for you. And if you tap and hold on the camera app, you'll get some quick options here as well. So you, if you wanna take a selfie, record a video, take portrait shots, you can quickly access exactly what you want rather than opening it and having to tap at the same time. But that is it for the introduction and beginner's guide to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and 14 Pro models here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'm happy to help you out. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing and clicking the bell notification box so you're notified when I post new videos. I have a full playlist in the description, as I said, with tons of tips, tricks and tutorials that you can use to get the most out of your iPhone. As always, I will see you in the next one.